Hello and welcome to the Building Design Architect of the Year Awards in association with sponsors Aluprof, Durovit, Haynes Watts and Kingspan. To start proceedings, here's Building Design's Chloe McCulloch. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to the Architect of the Year Awards 2020. Today's Architect of the Year film is a recognition of some of the best architectural practices and design talent in the UK. In the year that we celebrate Building Design's 50th anniversary, we are delighted to say the volume and standard of entries has been as high as ever across all categories. Today is about brilliant design, but it's also about people's passion for creating great places in which we can all live, work, learn and play, while also working to have the most positive impact on wider society. Now, more than ever, the positive contribution architects can make to communities deserves to be recognised. In tough times, we need more investment in good design, not less, and these awards are an important reminder of that. To win an Architect of the Year award is a mark of outstanding quality that can make a real difference to the reputation of your practice. So congratulations and good luck to all of our finalists. I would also like to make special mention of our sponsors who support the awards and make them possible. And of course, there are our judges who spent many hours considering the entries. I'd like to thank them all for their time, insight and expertise. And in a moment, you will hear from the chair of the Architect of the Year Awards, Thomas Lane. That's all from me. Thank you and good luck. Thanks, Chloe. Now to tell you more about this year's entrance, here's Building Design's Thomas Lane. The AYA is a unique amongst architectural awards for recognising a body of work rather than one-off projects. All our winners demonstrated a confident ability to bring fresh ideas and unique approaches to a wide range of different schemes within each category rather than trotting out tired, repetitive design formulae. We had an excellent response to our new category this year, the Social Impact Award. Building Design launched a new initiative this year to put social value at the heart of our coverage. We wanted to celebrate the inspiring work that architects are doing to make the world a fairer, better and more sustainable place. And of course, I must thank our judges for their time and expertise and most importantly, patience as we grapple with deliberating our winners virtually this year. Debating the merits of the entries is definitely more challenging online and there are the technical glitches that we are all so familiar with now. Despite this, we came up with a fantastic list of winners. And so now to the awards and good luck to all our shortlisted architects. Thanks Tom. Right, it's time to reveal some results. Thank you to all of you who entered. We're about to reveal the winners. Please remember to spread the word about today's proceedings using the hashtag AYA2020. And so to the first of our awards, which is new this year, it's the Social Impact Award. Building Design launched a new initiative this year, putting social value at the heart of their coverage. This year's shortlist celebrates architects whose work is making a tangible difference to the quality of people's lives, including end users and the wider community. On our first shortlist are Atkins, HTA Design, JTP, Mikhail Riches, Pollard Thomas Edwards, RCKA, Squire and Partners, and Turner Works. From those, the judges awarded their first high commendation, and that goes to Turner Works. Well done to you. But the winner, and taking the Social Impact Award, is RCKA. The judges were particularly impressed by the range of projects included within the entry, all of which showcased RCKA's commitment to create sustainable places, supporting social value in the community, while celebrating the uniqueness of their clients and users. Our inaugural Social Impact Award winner, RCKA. Next, the award for Infrastructure Architect, open to architects working on infrastructure projects, including rail, light rail, underground and bus stations, airports, power generation and distribution, and water facilities, amongst other things. 
The architects that made the shortlist here are Arab Architecture, Landolt and Brown, and Useful Studio. All worthy finalists. But which of them wins? Well, I can reveal. The Infrastructure Architect of the Year is Arab Architecture. Arab Architecture's team delivered three projects at national, city and community scales that exemplified their approach to transport. Each project was transformative, meaningful and benefited the countries, communities and people who use them. Infrastructure Architect of the Year, Arab Architecture. Our next award goes to the Public Realm Architect of the Year. This award recognises architects working on the strategic distribution of buildings and infrastructure, as well as the design of hard and soft landscaping. In the running, Acme, Atkins, BDP, Churchman Thornhill Finch, HTA Design, Nex, PRP, and We Made That. From those, taking the Public Realm Award is Nex. Nex showcased a diverse portfolio of work across sectors, all of which reflects their ethos. It's shaped by a passion for creating architecture that brings value to all by connecting architecture to the city and enhancing the public realm. Public Realm Architect of the Year, Nex. Next, it's the award for Architectural Client of the Year. Entry to this award was by nomination for clients who appreciate the value of good architecture, who select architects, promote collaboration and ensure their architectural vision is seen through on time and in budget. Here come the finalists. Hartlepool Borough Council, London Borough of Sutton and Maggie's Centres. But who takes the trophy? Well, it's London Borough of Sutton. Nominated by Bell Phillips Architects, they said that the London Borough of Sutton team were an innovative client who set the brief and parameters with a long-term view. Their projects set to create a place that caters to the well-being of current and future residents with a genuine focus on quality. Winning the award for Architectural Client of the Year, London Borough of Sutton. Office Architect of the Year next, open to architects working on the design of new built offices or refurbishments of existing structures. And in the running this time are AHR, Bennett's Associates, Buckley Gray Yeoman, Fletcher Priest Architects, Gibson Thornley Architects, Moxon Architects, Shepard Robson and Tate Hindle. But who wins? Well, I can tell you, it's Bennett's Associates. <laughs> Bennett's Associates are leaders in office design and their portfolio of entries reflected this. Their spaces all satisfy the brief for innovative new generation workplaces whilst providing low carbon solutions. Office Architect of the Year, Bennett's Associates. <laughs> the award for individual house architect is next sponsored by Durovit. This award is for one-off family houses of any budget, with the judges looking for evidence of all-round design excellence. On the shortlist here, Alison Brooks Architects, Almanac, Annabelle Tugby Architects, Fletcher Crane Architects, Marek Wojciechowski Architects, McLean Quinlan, McGonagall McGrath, and Selenki Parsons. There's a high commendation here for Alison Brooks Architects. Congratulations to you. But to tell us which wins, here's Jurovitz Martin Carroll. Jurovitz are delighted to be sponsoring this year's Award for Individual House Architect of the Year. And the winner is McGonagall McGrath. McGonagall McGrath's work is simple yet refined and executed with clarity, which displays high levels of details and craft. The judges believe that their range of work showed a deep understanding of their client and skill in the creation. Individual House Architect of the Year, McGonagall McGrath, and thanks to sponsor Dewey. Next, it's the award for Sustainability Architect, sponsored by Kingspan. Kingspan are the global leader in advanced insulation and building envelope solutions. 
Our mission is to accelerate a net zero emissions built environment with the well-being of people and the planet at its heart. We are delighted to be sponsoring the Sustainability Architect of the Year category. Good luck to all the finalists. This award is open to architects who've made an outstanding contribution to a more sustainable built environment. And the contenders for this one are Archetype, Bennett's Associates and HTA Design. But which wins? It's HTA Design. HTA's entry showcased their leading approach to sustainable design and the judges were impressed that each project set to raise awareness about the issues of environmental sustainability. Sustainability Architect of the Year, HTA Design. And thank you to sponsor Kingspan. Next, two awards for Education Architects. The first of those is for Nursery to Sixth Form, open to architects working on residential or teaching facilities in the nursery, primary and secondary education sectors. And the winner has to be one of these. Archetype. Child Graddon Lewis. Cottrell and Vermeulen. Levitt Bernstein. HKS. NVB Architects. Panoia and Prasad and Scott Brownrigg. We have a high commendation and that goes to Archetype. Congratulations to you. But this year's winner is Panoia and Prasad. Panoia and Prasad have continued to design innovative learning environments for children and their entry showcased how pioneering design can help learning to be more effective, enjoyable and inspiring. Education Architect Nursery to Sixth Form, Panoia and Prasad. So now our second Education Architect Award for Higher Education. Contenders here are architects working on residential or teaching facilities in the higher education sectors. And the shortlist looks like this. Atkins, BDP, Bond Bryan, Cottrell and Vermeulen, Faulkner Browns, Field and Clegg Bradley Studios, Grimshaw, and Panoia and Prasad. Taking a high commendation, Cottrell and Vermeulen. But who's claiming the higher education title? It's Grimshaw. Grimshaw's entry focused on their higher educational projects and showcased how end user focused their work really is. They aim to promote learning, collaboration and well-being whilst creating sustainable buildings that are adaptable for the future. Higher Education Architect of the Year, Grimshaw. Interior architects enter the spotlight next. Here the judges considered architects working in shops, restaurants, hotels, houses or offices. And on this impressive shortlist, BDP, David Cohn Architects, Gensler, Gregory Phillips Architects, Proctor & Shaw, Shepard Robson, Soda Studio and T.P. Bennett. From those, the Architect of the Year Awards 2020 Interior Architect winner is Shepard Robson. Shepard Robson's projects pushed forward the industry's thinking on adopting a truly people-centric approach. Their BBC Cymru Wales project was particularly impressive as they worked with the clients to include areas which are sensitive to neurodivergent conditions and showcased their ethos. Interior Architect of the Year, Shepard Robson. We focus on public buildings next, for architects working on any project of public function. And these are the finalists. Bell Phillips Architects, Bennett's Associates, Chris Dyson Architects, Dow Jones Architects, Glenn Howells Architects, Haverstock, Hoskins, and Pilbro and Partners. Taking a high commendation, Bell Phillips Architects. Well done to you. But the winning public building architect is Dow Jones Architects. The judges admired the range of projects within Dow Jones Entry, which all shared a consistent and contemporary approach, with spaces for the staff as equally considered as the front of house spaces. Public Building Architect of the Year, Dow Jones Architects. The best architectural employer is next, sponsored by Haynes Watts. Hello. Haynes Watts are delighted to be sponsoring the AOA 2020 Best Architectural Employer of the Year Award. This is an award that's very close to Haynes Watts' heart and values. 
Right now, the importance of employers looking after their team's well-being has never been more relevant. Those companies nominated have demonstrated the impact and success of putting their teams first has had on their organisation. These successes range from healthy work-life balance, quality workspace, diversity and equality. From here in Swartz, we wish all the finalists the best of luck. Here we reward architectural practices that promote a high quality work environment for their employees. On the shortlist this time, Assail Architecture, Atkins, HLM Architects, HKS, Jestico and Wiles, Matt Architecture, MSMR Architects, and TP Bennett. So who's taking the title? Best Architectural Employer? It's Jestico and Wiles. Jestico and Wiles excelled in all areas of employee satisfaction. They placed an extremely high emphasis on the well-being of their staff and have invested in HR strategies that ensure and celebrate gender and diversity, making them really stand out as the best architectural employer. The winner of Best Architectural Employer of the Year, Jestico and Wiles. And our thanks to sponsors, Haynes Watts. Next, it's the award for Housing Architect. This award encompasses all forms of development, from two homes to large-scale multi-unit housing. In the running here, Alison Brooks Architects, Conran & Partners, Field & Clegg Bradley Studios, HTA Design, Lifshutz Davidson Sandilands, Morris & Company, Simpson Hoare, and Stitch Studio. Now, which is the Housing Architect of the Year? It's Alison Brooks Architects. Alison Brooks Architects advocate a proactive approach to communal social spaces. Their portfolio of projects for the awards showcase their variety of projects, all of which were presented in contemporary and inventive ways. Housing Architect of the Year, Alison Brooks Architects. Our next award is for the Refurbishment Architect of the Year, open to architects working on the remodelling of existing structures. And in strictly alphabetical order, here are the finalists. 3D Reed, Buckley Gray Yeoman, Broadway Malian, John Robertson Architects, Levitt Bernstein, Mica Architects, Spratley and Partners, and Squire and Partners. But who takes the trophy? It's Mica Architects. The judges referred to their portfolio of projects as being outstanding and commend them on their year of work. Mica were able to deliver a body of major refurbishment and remodeling projects in an extremely diverse range of existing contexts, buildings and uses. Refurbishment Architect of the Year, Mica Architects. Next, it's Retail and Leisure Architect of the Year. For this award, the judges were looking at architects working on retail and leisure facilities of all scales, including sports facilities, shops, cinemas, leisure centres, hotels and spas. And these architects made their shortlist. David Morley Architects. Faulkner Browns. JM Architects. Lifshutz Davidson Sandilands. McCrana Lavington, Populous, Pozzoni, and Woods Baggett. But the winning retail and leisure architect is Faulkner Browns. The diversity of the buildings within Faulkner Browns' submission reflects the changing needs of society and showcases their desire to work with clients to create opportunities for people. Their designs were of exceptional quality and recognised the vital functions that sport and leisure buildings fulfil within communities. Retail and Leisure Architect of the Year, Faulkner Browns. It's time now to name the Small Project Architect of the Year. This award recognises architects who are undertaking new build or refurbishment projects of a relatively small scale, with a project cost of under £1 million. On the shortlist here, Bradley van der Straten, Fletcher Crane Architects, Gibson Thornley Architects, Mitzi Studio, Pad Studio, and William Green Architects. 
but the winning small project architect is Pad Studio. Pad Studio's portfolio showed their company ethos as a small and dedicated team who strive to deliver the best work for their client. The judges were particularly impressed by their commitment to the environment and it's evident that they place sustainability high on the agenda. Small Project Architect of the Year, Pad Studio. Young architects are in the spotlight now, open to practices that are less than 12 years old. And the contenders for the Young Architect title are Al Jawad Pike, Beasley Dixon Architects, Bradley van der Straten, Bureau de Change, Drew, KLA, Office S&M, and Spratly and Partners. So, who takes the title and the trophy? Since its launch 20 years ago, Building Design's Young Architect of the Year Award has helped launch the careers of countless talented young architects, from Neil McLaughlin to Carmody Grok. This year's winner of the coveted Yaya Trophy is a practice whose entry stood out to the judges for its attitude, its strong portfolio, and the promise that its best work lies ahead. It's Office S&M. Congratulations to the Young Architect of the Year, Office S&M. Ladies and gentlemen, our penultimate award goes to the Architectural Leader of the Year. Now, this winner will be a successful leader who's helped raise awareness of the role architects play in creating a better quality built environment. They'll also be a positive role model to the profession and practice of architecture. The contenders for the title are Jude Barber from Collective Architecture, Joanne Cowan from Joe Cowan Architects, Simone de Gale from Simone de Gale Architects, Christopher Lee from Populous, Kirsten Lees from Grimshaw, Sally Lewis from Stitch, Julia Park from Levitt Bernstein, and Siobhan Reich from Farrells. Now, who takes the title and the trophy? Our leader is a housing specialist and an ardent, passionate campaigner. They have lobbied hard to stop the anomaly that allows developers to convert offices into residential without the need for planning permission. This has resulted in flats as small as 13 square metres, some without windows. Recently, the government announced that homes built using permitted development rights must now meet national space standards, which is an amazing result. And so I'm delighted to reveal this year's Architectural Leader of the Year is Julia Park. Hello everyone and thank you so much for this. It, it really means a lot. Um, I do recognise my capacity to behave like a dog with a bone, um, but I've honestly never seen myself as any kind of leader, so this is really quite harm, heartwarming. Um, my, my very short list of things to celebrate this year just got a bit longer. Thank you very, very much. Architectural Leader of the Year, Levitt Bernstein's Julia Park. So now to our final award, the Gold Award. This is the best of the best, chosen by the judging panel. Now the shortlist for this award has been created from all of tonight's winning architectural practices. So who's battling it out for the Gold Award? Social Impact winner, RCKA. Infrastructure Architect, Arab Architecture. Public Realm Architect, Nex. Office Architect, Bennett's Associates. Individual House Architect, McGonigal McGrath. Sustainability Architect, HTA Design. Education Architect, Nursery to Sixth Form, Panoya and Prasad. Higher Education Architect, Grimshaw. Interior Architect, Shepherd Robson. Public Building Architect, Dow Jones Architects. Housing Architect, Alison Brooks Architects. Refurbishment Architect, Mica Architects. Retail and Leisure Architect, Faulkner Browns. Small Project Architect, Pad Studio. And Young Architect, Office S&M. But which is this year's Gold Award winner?
Our Gold Award winner is a medium-sized London-based practice whose speciality is skillfully combining historic buildings with bold yet respectful modern interventions to provide a better experience for all. Their entry includes work on buildings dating from the 12th, 17th and 20th centuries, demonstrating the breadth of their abilities. And our winner shows that architectural practices can thrive after the loss of their founder, which all too often isn't the case. And so, I'm delighted to announce that this year's Gold Award winner is Micah Architects. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of the 2020 Gold Award, Micah Architects. Well, those were the Architect of the Year Awards for 2020. Huge thanks to all our award sponsors, well done to all the finalists and high commendations, and special congratulations to the winners. You can discover more about all of this year's winners at bdonline.co.uk. And finally, we have exciting plans in place to celebrate Building Design's 50th anniversary next year with all of our finalists and winners. So look out for more details coming soon. Thanks for joining us.